Okay. So let's go over a couple of things that should help you with the homework, just to increase your understanding. So first, clear CLC, close all, clear, delete all the workspace variables. I do it down here, you can see, cleared all the workspace variables, CLC, clear the command window, close all. If I had new figures open, if I make one, there. Now if I close all. Okay, so uh, length one equals two, length two equals three, length three equals four. <clears throat> These will just be placeholders I use for for uh, the number of rows, the number of columns, and the number of uh, levels in the third dimension, the depth of the third dimension. So let's say N to be the number of rows, M to be the number of columns, and P to be the depth in the third dimension. So for clarity, I'm going to display row every time we start the new row loop, display call uh, every time we start the column loop, and display third dimension, whichever, every time we do the third dimension. So that you can see for clarity what's going on here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with value equals zero, and then Every time I go into a new column, I'm going to add one. So you can see what this looks like. If I run this and go up first, row one, column one. And then you update val, val equals one. So third dimension, one, two, three, and four. So that'll make row one, column one, and then all of the third dimension value of one and then you go into column two which is now sets value equals two then everything in the third dimension in the second column still the first row will be two everything in column three everything in the third dimension um but still row one will be a value three and then you go you go here and you've got uh, the next row coming up. So we'll do the next row, and it does the same exact thing, except you adding on to three now instead of the zero. So you start at three, add one to four, and update all the values there. So when we show what basic one looks like, run just this up to this line, not including, then it will have uh, one, two, three dimensions, right? That's what this is showing us. This is saying it's displaying all of the rows, all of the columns first in the third dimension of variable basic one. Because right here, basic one is a two by three by four double. So two in the rows, three in the columns, four depth in the third dimension. So as you can see, there's four of these. That's because these are like the pages layered on top of each other. This is the layers of the fourth dimension, or excuse me, the third. And as you saw before, value one will be row one, column one, all of the third dimension. Uh, value two will be row one, column two, all of the third dimension. So it'll just duplicate. Each of these will be the same uh, across the third dimension because we iterated across every value in the third dimension and updated it with the same value. Okay. So let's say for clarity, we want to make a matrix that's same size, two rows, three columns, four, um, four depth in the third dimension. Then we want to iterate through the col uh, or the third dimension, and we want to iterate through the rows. We, we don't want the value to be changed within this for loop where the column is being iterated over. So here we have basic two of row column third dimension equals val, and that val is here. So if we run this, now you can see, or you won't be able to see because I expressed all the output. So if we run right here, so we can see basic two. Basic two is right here. So that will be one, 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 two, two, two. 
333444 because it won't change in the column, but it'll change anytime it's swapping across the to the next row, excuse me. So it'll be 111, 222, 333, 444. Um, because that's every time switching rows. Okay, and we'll use that for clarity for the following. So how to test everything in a matrix and put it put a logical true where it meets the condition and a logical fault where it fails the condition. So let's say we want to see basic two. Clear it and show basic two. Again, that's what we're dealing with. And I want to see if basic two is less than three. So that would be uh, right here is the only places that will be less than three. So if I run this, It'll give me just the first two rows. Um, all the rows in the first dimension of the third will be true, but all the rest will be false, right? Because again, if I run this, it's just the first um, first in the third dimension that has things less than three. So less than or equal to three will now show uh, the first row in the second level of the third dimension as well, because now we're including three in there. And let's say we also want, we want to see where it's less than or equal to three and basic two is greater than one. Now it excludes this first row because that's where it equals one, but includes the twos and threes. All right, um, so that's how you'd do conditional checks within a matrix, right? It'll just look at every point in the matrix and then update uh, with an output a true or false value if it meets that condition for that element. All right, so populate the data in 3D. So let's look at some elements and matrices. So let's look at basic two of one, one, one. This will be one because basic two is this. So one, 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 this is all the rows, all the columns, first and third dimension. So row one, column one, row one, column first uh, is right here. So that'll give us one. If we want to find, for example, this, this would be basic two of row one, column three, depth of two in the third dimension. So this will give us three. And you can see ants equals three. And let's say we want to see basic two, all the rows uh, first in column one. So What's basic two look like again? Like this. So let's say we want to look at uh, row one, all the columns. And uh, that would be the third, third dimension. That will be all the fives. <clears throat> and we could do things like this equals five so do a condition check and that will just say true 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 because for each element in there they do equal five if i change this to four then they would all be false or zero okay so press all these real quick place elements in matrices so let's say we wanted to place some elements like this so we want to make the first row, all the columns, first and third dimension, to be ones. And let's just make it like, like uh, basic two, where we have 10 ones, one, 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 four, let's just do five, five ones. Um, and then in the next, two, 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 two
next day 353 and then this will be the first in the third dimension first page if you will and then the next page will be but then the way we can do this is ones of one to five multiplied by nothing for the first one it's just going to be ones basic three of one colon two or excuse me that'll be second row so one in the first dimension equals ones of one and five because we want to make ones of one to five makes this one row five columns all values one but now this we multiply by two and that'll give us a twos matrix and let's do three three okay so now if i run this basics three <clears throat> Basic three. Here we go. Initially, we'll make all the ones, and then we'll make all the twos, make all the threes, and then we'll make it uh, add a depth in the third dimension. So we'll have this ones, twos, threes, fours, and it will automatically just populate it with zeros. Once you call up the third, second dimension, any empty spots will just have zeros. Um, and then so. Next time you update it, it'll update second row with fives. And then finally, it'll update it with what it is now with the final one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Um, and then if you wanted to say it's like three of, let's say all the rows first column in all of the third dimension. So I'll make, uh, there are three rows, one column and, uh, excuse me, um, this is two in the third dimension. And I want to update it with seven. Now, when I check basic three, when I run this, We'll fill everything, all the rows, all the columns. Then I have to specify with this ones, the correct size. So it's going to be three rows, one column, two in the third dimension uh, to make this sevens. And then I just update this with this. Now checking components in a loop. So kind of gone over this now, but we'll, let's say... We we're just given basic two, we didn't make it. So basic two, I want to go along each dimension. So I want to say length one, length two, length three, equals size of basic two. Because if I check size basic two, I'll give me two, three, and four. So that'll update length one with two, Link two, three, link three, four. And uh, the only reason I would need to do this is if I didn't have, I already have them from before, but let's say I don't. So I was just given this matrix and need to pull out the number of rows, number of columns, and number of uh, depth in the third dimension. So now length one, two, three, they're all good. So I want to iterate over each. So for n is 1 to length 1 for m equals 1 to length 2 for t equals 1 to length 3 um and then whatever whatever thing like let's say i want to check at each point um just as i did with the conditional check I could go element by element and check it. So I could say check test of n m t equals, um, and then I'll use an if statement to say if basic two of n m t 
And let's say I want to check if it's equal to three. Then my check test would be true, else my check test will give me a false. Then close all these loops and suppress these. Show you check test. Now check test. These are ones right in the the matrix we're checking against, the basic two. And uh, so it'll give you one, two, three. This is the only row. Um, all the, those in this row have three. So that's our check test. That's the same way, same thing as up here, the comparison we're doing. So um, let's say we wanted to do something a little more complicated. Let's say we want to check that everything in a dimension meets a condition. So let's say we want to check that everything in the third dimension um, meets a condition. So basically just compress it so that we want to see, okay, basic two, let's clear this, basic two, we'll check that this and this and this and this all meet a specific condition. So we're going to say four n one two length one m equals one two length two and then then we're gonna say uh check s two and we'll just make it n and m because now we'll compress it all into uh along the third dimension we'll have length one because we're checking everything within that. So it'll compress everything, all that information down. It'll test everything against each other in the third dimension. So compress that down to one. So if we do check test of n m is, and we can do uh, if to update this value, if basic two of n m, all of them, and if we use all of this equals three. Um, that'll be the condition we're checking. Else, check this two of n m equals false. And, and, and so now, what will this give us? Uh, first. Let's fix spelling. Now check test two and clear it and then call up check test two from here. Now they're all one because if we look at basic two, um, in each situation, looking at this row uh, in this column, every spot, this, this meets that condition, it's less than 100. This also meets that condition, less than 100. This also meets that condition that condition and this meets that condition. So, and all of these values are actually less than 100, so everything will be true. But let's say less than eight, because these right here do not meet eight, less than eight condition. Less than eight, true, but we wrote this wrong right there. <clears throat> should be like this, because all of basic two of n m colon should be less than eight not all of that is less than eight so then we can check if it's true run this and because if we show basic two all of the row and uh for each element in here this is less than eight that's correct less than eight less than eight less than eight so the placement of this in the check test two will be true this is the same whereas this this is less than eight that's true but we're checking against all of row one column one all the columns so or row two in this case so row two column one 
two column one, row two column one. Uh, in this case, this is not less than eight, so that would be false. Whereas if we did less than seven, now all of them will be zero here. Okay, and you could do look at all the columns and look at a specific row and depth in the third dimension. Let's check if it's less than seven. So now we're going to have uh, one column and whatever in the third dimension. So if I run this, now we're compressing it, all the columns into one. So instead of one in third dimension, it'll be one in the columns. So one, one, one is the first one we're checking, right? We're checking row one, one in the third dimension, all of the columns. These are all one, so that meets less than seven, good. Less than seven, less than seven, all the way down to here. So just be in the last that uh, that we will get faults. And let's see, why does it not show that for n equals one? Ah. Is to go all the way to length three. And now you can see it'll show zeros in the fourth dimension. Whereas if I did, let's say I want less than seven and greater than two. Now one and two will be excluded. So one, 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 zero, zero. Okay, so that's how you can do that. And this isn't necessary. This is just something I was using for troubleshooting because when I was making check test two different sizes, it's easier if I clear it. So it's only got the data that I actually want in it. Check test two. Okay, so now let's sum everything along the third dimension. This is just like a condition check. So 4n equals 1 to length. 1 or m equals 1 to length 2. Then we're going to sum. This will be uh, uh, sum basic 2 of row, column, and single in the third dimension because we're compressing it like we are with the test. The sum of basic 2 of n m cool. and we end this the right thing here i think to see and let's look at basic two and then suppress this it shows some basic two okay so that's 16 16 16 20 20 20. Why is that? Because when we look at each element, specific row, specific column, starting at one, uh, let's look at the first dimension is one, second dimension is three. So when we add those together, that's four, four plus five is nine, nine plus seven is 16. So we'll get that. Then when you look at row one, column two, it's the exact same value. So it'll also give you 16, same with row one, column three. But row two, column one is two, two plus four is six, six plus six is 12, 12 plus eight is 20. So you get 20, 20, 20, because these are all the same values again. Uh, and that's because when you do basic two of one, one colon, again, that's one, three, five, seven. So you can just sum all those and compress the third dimension into one with sum of all those in the different depths at that uh, row and column. Okay.